Improving the mobility of infantry support guns by mounting them on a wheeled or tracked chassis was a concept that arose following the end of the First World War. The Germans developed the most successful implementation of this concept with the series of vehicles known as Sturmgeschutz. This also created a misconception that they were the only ones who tried to develop such a vehicle. However, other armies in Europe also showed an interest. Economical and industrial limitations often meant that not many of these projects went beyond a simple proposal. Poland, however, was one of the few nations that actually put some resources and time into developing these vehicles, albeit in limited scope. During the 1930s, Polish Major Marian Jureczk wrote a document called Infantry Review. He theorized that a lightly armored self-propelled gun would offer tactical advantages by increasing the mobility of infantry guns and providing quick fire support. His work soon gained the attention of Polish army officials who wanted to test his concept in practice. Given their limited industrial capabilities, the Poles decided to reuse the small and cheap TK-3 tankette. While far from perfect, it was available in sufficient numbers and there were plenty of spare parts for it. On the other hand, its small size would also limit the number of crew members and the amount of ammunition that could be carried, not to mention the armor protection. While the chassis was chosen, the Poles needed to find a suitable gun for the new vehicle. In 1931, it was proposed to mount a 13.2mm Hotchkiss heavy machine gun into a TK-3. This armament was ultimately abandoned due to the 13.2mm gun's insufficient armor-piercing capabilities. Another proposal included installing a French 37mm Puto gun. This installation proved to be feasible, but this gun also lacked proper armor penetration. By the end of 1931, the Military Institute of Engineering Research decided to test the installation of the 4.7cm WZ-1925 Pochisk infantry gun on a mounted TK-3 chassis. Polish engineers had to implement a number of modifications to the TK tankette in order to fit the new gun successfully. The upper part of the superstructure was removed and the gun was placed in the center of the vehicle. The first prototype was completed at the start of May 1932. By the end of that month, three additional vehicles were constructed. These vehicles received the TKD designation. The TK stands for the name of the tankette used for this modification, while the D stands for Jauko. A rough translation of this word in English would be small caliber gun. The TKD was based on a modified TK-3 tankette, and, as a result, the chassis's overall design was unchanged, including the front-mounted transmission, central crew compartment, and rear-positioned engine. While it was powered by the same 40-horsepower four-cylinder Ford Model A engine as on the TK-3, the added weight of the new superstructure, armament, and ammunition reduced maximum speed from 46 to 36 kilometers an hour. The suspension had to be strengthened to be able to cope with the increased weight as well. It consisted of four road wheels placed in pairs on two bogies. These were then suspended on a semi-elliptical leaf spring unit. In addition, there was one front drive sprocket, one rear idler, and four smaller return rollers beside. The first TKD built was actually equipped and tested with wider 170mm wide tracks. In contrast to the original TK3s, 140 mm wide tracks. In order to provide proper working space for the crew and the new armament, the TK-3's superstructure was removed. It was replaced with a simpler four-sided and open-topped superstructure. A large opening in the center of the front plate was covered with the gun shield, and observation ports were positioned on either side of the gun. In addition, there were more observation ports located on both sides of the superstructure. The TKD hull was protected by 8mm thick armor plates. The armor thickness of the added superstructure is unspecified in the sources. As this project did not advance beyond the prototype stage, only soft steel armor plates were used during the construction of the new superstructure. This means that the armor of the built vehicles was virtually useless in a real combat situation, but these would have been replaced with hardened plates in case of reduction. The TKDs were armed with a 4.7cm infantry gun, with its mount reinforced by two metal plates bolted to the front upper glacis. 
the gun had an elevation range of minus 12 degrees to plus 23 degrees and a traverse range of 8 degrees. The ammunition load is often described as consisting of 55 rounds. This gun was actually a domestic project that was developed at the request of the 3rd Department of the Artillery and Armament for Infantry Support in 1923. The initial development was slowed down by the disagreement between the infantry and artillery branches of the army on the precise overall characteristics of the new weapon. In 1924, a commission was formed by the Ministry of Military Affairs, led by Brigadier General Stanislaw Vrubleski. Following his appointment, the general issued a new request for an infantry support gun. The caliber was to be from 47 to 50 millimeters. The weight would not exceed 220 kilograms. It had to be able to be dismantled into smaller parts and then carried by groups of four or five men. It would have a shield capable of resisting rifle caliber bullets at least from ranges of 300 meters, an elevation ranging from negative 6 degrees to plus 45 degrees and 80 degrees of traverse horizontally. The armor penetration at 1 km was to be 20 mm, with a 15 round per minute rate of fire, an effective range of some 2.5 km, and could be operated by a crew of two men. The Polish army initially considered using foreign guns, but they still needed to fulfill the requirements. As the foreign proposals led nowhere, the Poles decided to go local. If the foreign designers could not offer what they wanted, maybe domestic designers would have more success. Initially, this too failed to achieve results. The only company that actually proposed a real design was the ammunition plant Pochisk, which was responsible for the production of castings for artillery shells and other components, and had no experience in arms design. The design team that worked on the new gun was led by a former lieutenant colonel of the Austro-Hungarian artillery staff, Edmund Rugla, and the first drawings were ready by March 1925. Wanting to gain favor within the Polish army, and knowing its poor financial situation, Pochisk offered to build the first guns for free. The Polish army accepted this offer, and very shortly, two slightly different designs would be presented. In September 1925, these two guns were used on firing trials, after which they were officially accepted for the competition. The following year, a production order for four additional guns was placed, alongside 590 armor piercing, 530 high explosive, and 240 canister rounds. Due to various delays, the firing trials of this gun were conducted in 1930. During these, the armor piercing round was shown to be insufficiently developed and did not perform well. In addition, the breech mechanism was very sensitive to dust and required careful cleaning which involved the removal of the barrel after it was exposed to dust. Finally, on the 9th of February, 1932, mostly due to its inadequate armor penetration, the 4.7 centimeter gun project was officially rejected. In total, between six and 10 guns were built. An alternative armament for the TKD project was tested in May of 1936, with one vehicle being reamed with a Vickers 4.7 centimeter tank gun. Compared to the original TKD with its centrally positioned main gun armament, the new vehicle had the gun positioned on the right-hand side instead. The added extra weight on one side of the vehicle greatly affected the service life of the right suspension unit. Ultimately, this installation was unsuccessful and abandoned. The fate of the vehicle is not known. The TKD had a crew of only two, the driver and the commander. The driver was positioned on the left side of the vehicle and the commander on the right. These two were overburdened with the many tasks that they had to perform. The commander was in a particularly inconvenient situation, as besides his primary commanding role, he had to find targets, aim, shoot, and then reload the gun, which was a tedious and time-consuming process. Following the completion of the four TKDs, there was great interest from the Polish army for these to be field tested. While initially intended to increase the mobility of infantry support guns, the vehicle was also tested in other roles, including anti-tank. In June 1932, it was proposed by some from the Polish general staff to equip each TK-3 tankette platoon with one TKD. 
However, the four TKDs were used to form an anti-tank platoon, which was temporarily attached to the 2nd Cavalry Division during military exercises held in August 1932. In the following years, the few TKDs saw extensive use in various military exercises. On one such occasion, in September 1934, one vehicle had an accident and caught fire. Luckily for the Poles, the damage was minimal and, after a day spent in repair, it was back to working condition. While the TKD was noted to have greatly increased the combat effectiveness of supported units, the Polish army was not satisfied with its overall performance and its design was deemed problematic. The protection was inadequate and it had an overburdened crew. What actually killed the project was its obsolete armament, which was often criticized for having a low velocity and insufficient armor penetration for the standards of the mid-30s. In 1938, the political situation between Poland and Czechoslovakia escalated around the disputed territory of Zalje. As Czechoslovakia was torn to pieces by the Germans, the Polish government issued an ultimatum to their Czechoslovak counterparts to return their province to Poland at the end of September 1938. Poland prepared its army in case the Czech government rejected this ultimatum. The 10th Cavalry Brigade, with three TKDs, was part of the Silesia Independent Operational Group under General Władysław Bortnowski. While this unit's participation in this operation was limited at best, the whole situation was resolved in favor of the Poles after only a few days. The final fate of the TKD vehicles after 1938 is not known precisely. Whether these vehicles were used in combat during the German attack on Poland in September 1939 is unknown. There is a photograph of a single unarmed TKD left abandoned, which gives a hint of their possible fate. It is possible that some of the TKD had their armaments removed and reused as ammunition supply vehicles. This makes sense given that its main armament was not put into service and thus finding ammunition and spare parts for it would be difficult. There is also a possibility that this vehicle simply broke down and the Poles removed the gun. Ultimately, their final fate is unknown and if these four were captured by the Germans, they were likely scrapped after the invasion. That concludes our video and the obscure and less known Polish attempt to develop a self-propelled infantry support gun. Were the Polish wrong to not develop this concept further? Or did the decision to use the experimental armament doom the project from the start? Share your opinions in a comment section. If you haven't done so already, we invite you to subscribe to stay updated on future content. If you'd like to contribute further, consider supporting us on Patreon or PayPal. Your contributions help us create more engaging videos. Until next time, stay focused and stay tuned.